Hi, Gator is so the majestic rider. So look at the nice champagne horse I get to ride today. And uh, he just got here a week ago. I've been doing mostly groundwork. Uh, has a poor top line right now. And uh, so we've been doing some work over the poles. And now I've started to ride him. So you'll see I just have him in a snaffle bit. And we're trying to make sure he understands the bit and all the movements. And then we'll put him probably in a little shank because then that'll help frame him up and I won't have to have much, as much contact on him. So uh, I was told he's a Rocky Mountain horse. He has a little bit longer stride like a Tennessee walking horse. And sometimes those horses are a little bit mixed together because some of the lines, some of the people wanted a bigger stride on the Rocky and they mix some walking horse in there. So sometimes you get ones with a little bit bigger stride, don't we? So first thing we're going to do, and hopefully you can hear me because it is a little bit windy, is our lateral flexion and our vertical flexion. And I do have a video on this if you haven't seen me do it before. And what I'm trying to get him to do is just give to the bit, but to the side and stand still. And you'll see he's kind of walking off as we're doing it. But we did it last week towards the end of the week. And then he's had a couple days off, okay? So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how I'm doing it, but it just gets the horse to give to the bit. And it's a great exercise to teach him in case your rein or bridle ever breaks, you can turn their head to the side and they will usually just stand there, okay? But um, I know I'm not facing the camera so well because he keeps moving around. So hopefully in another week, he'll be able to do this just standing still and won't walk around. Uh, some of the horses with that kind of lanky back end, it's hard for them, they're very flexible, but when they turn their head too far, they uh, their back feet start moving. So some of those horses, I won't turn their heads as far. So I make sure they know how to do that. I'm going to face the camera. Then I'm going to do vertical flexion, which means I'm going to pull on one rein and then the other. And then once he gives to the bit, once he gives to the bit, we're going to release. So I'm not asking him to move his feet. He thinks he's supposed to back up. That's okay. Uh, it's good to rest your hands on the saddle or on your hips or something so you don't keep moving your hands around while they're trying to figure out what you want them to do. And if they back up, you let them back up and you don't release until they're standing still and they drop their head down. So that's what he's figuring it out, and he figured it out on Friday, but again, he's had a couple of days off, and so this is normal. Anytime they have days off, they forget, just like we forget things at work. So again, I'm using the saddle just to keep my hands still, but when I'm riding, I'm going to have my hands up higher. We're always trying to keep a straight line from the bit all the way up our arm to our elbow, so my arm should be more like this, but... Again, when you're trying to keep your hands still, sometimes it's good to use the saddle just to hold on or grip something. Okay. So now what we're going to do is just walk. And I always like to make sure all the horses know how to do one rein stops. And it teaches them how to listen to your seat and your breathing and all that. So then when you go to two hands, it's much easier. So what I'm going to do is I do this at the walk. I'm going to slide my hand down the rein in a minute. I'm going to take my legs off, sit back, take a deep breath in, say well, and then I'm going to pull. <sighs> Whoa. So I didn't even pull because as I put my hand down the rein, he turned his head and he stopped. So he did that very well. Then I sit here for a couple of seconds. If they walk off, I do another one rein stop. If they walk off again, I do another one rein stop. And I have videos on this too. So I just repeat it. Many times they'll go to the gate because they want to leave. So if they go to the gate, which he's not, then I just turn them. So here we go. He's like, you're going to do it. So I'm just going to go slow and stay in the middle. So legs off, sit back, deep breath in. <sighs> Whoa. And then he turned his head on his own. I never even touched the rein. So very smart horse. Not every horse is like this. So I'm just going to do it a couple more times. But some horses, I have to do this for days and not do anything else. You're turning. Let's turn this way, buddy. He's like, I'm smart. I got it. 
So here we go. Sit back, legs up, deep breath in. Whoa, slide my hand down. There we go. So I never really pulled on the rein. He just did it. Now I'm going to do it one more time to the right. So we're going to squeeze, walk off, and I'm just squeezing my calves together like I have a ball in between. Take my leg off, sit back, deep breath in. Whoa. Now I want him to turn his head to the right. He turned it to the left, which is fine. He was trying, but I'm trying to get him to be flexible both ways. So he does this pretty well, so we're going to move on. So now I'm going to go run with two hands. But again, each horse is different. Some horses I have to spend days on that, and other horses I don't. So I'm going to go to two hands, and I just want to walk slow first, and I'm just going to make some bending circles. When you bend your horse, what you're going to try and do is not just hold the rein and the leg on them the whole time. You want to squeeze on the rein. At the same time, press lightly with your calf. If they fall in, you might want to wear a spur and touch them with the spur so they don't lean in. And what you're trying to tell them by looking where you're going and squeezing and relaxing on the rein is that you want to keep turning. So if he keeps turning, I won't steer. Now he stopped turning. So I'm going to help him. Now use a little outside rein because he fell in. Now I'm going to use a little inside rein and inside leg. So in the end, you're trying to get them to move off of your seat and using your eyes to steer. Now we're going to go the other way. So you'll see I'm turning my head to the right. I'm going to look to the right, squeeze and relax on the right rein. At the same time, I touch him with my right leg. So I'm using the rein to tell him I want to go this direction, but I'm using my leg to make his body arc. And you'll see he's a little flexible, right? So he's turning his head all sorts of ways. But in time, we'll get that settled down. So if he overturns, I use my outer rein, which is my left rein, to control how far he can turn his head. The flexible ones, you don't want them walking sideways with their head going one way and their body going the other. So you help them and say, no, I don't want you to turn that much. So again, squeeze and relax on the inside rein. So this is how much I do it, and this is, uh, again, I'm using my leg at the same time. So squeeze, relax. He's good. He's still good. Squeeze, relax. He's good. He's steering well on his own. He's just following my eyes and how my body is turning. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to look to the left, squeeze and relax on the left rein as I touch his, um, his side with my left leg. And you'll see I opened my rein up for a minute because he got a little lost there. And it's quicker to just kind of pull out, but I don't want to do that the whole time. I'm making my circles or he'll start to fall in. So I just pull or I squeeze and relax my rein kind of back towards my right hip like I am now. But if it's quick and they're kind of lost, you might see me pull my hand out to guide them. So now we're going to do our serpentine. He sped up, so I held him. I want him to do all of this at just a regular walk. So I try to get all the gated horses to come in and walk because so many of them are stuck on go and they won't walk. So the only way they'll learn to walk is you ride them at a walk. So your serpentine is a great exercise. You weave back and forth. So it's kind of like little half circles. You bend them to the right. You bend them to the left. It rained here, so it's a little deep and mucky down here. So I'm bending left, squeeze and relax on my left rein as I use my left leg, and then squeeze and relax on my right rein as I touch him with my right leg. So I'm using my calf. So I'm just alternating back and forth, and then the other side supports the other side of their mouth. If you just pull on one rein and you don't support on the other side or you're pulling the whole time, they start to lean on you. So that was decent enough. So we're going to move on. Okay. So... Uh, last week I walked and I did this, the rest of this pattern at a slow walk and he was very good at it. So what I'm going to do is just make one circle at the walk because I have to work on his flat walk and get his running walk. And so then I'm going to do the rest of this arena exercise at his flat walk to get that out of the way. And again, the arena footing's not that great, so we'll see how much of the arena I can use. Okay. So this is just his trail walk. Now we're going to go to our first gate, which is the flat walk. Make sure your reins are short enough. You have three fingers around the reins. The thumbs go on top of the reins to hold your reins in place so they don't slip. And then your pinkies on the outside. All of that helps to hold it in place. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit. And with him, I'm going to kind of alternate my legs to help him lengthen his stride. And I'm going to push with one leg and then the other. Now, as I do this, I am going to try to keep his head down. I want the top of his head kind of uh, 
level with my pommel. That's what I call neutral position. He uh, will trot. He will pace some when he's loose, and he will gate some. So we're just going to kind of put his head in neutral position because that is what's going to be best for his neck and back. And he can gate like that pretty well. Now, last week I was able to go faster. He just pulled, and I just held so he didn't speed up. Now I'm releasing. But last week, uh, I can feel it. He is getting much better because of the footing. So the footing really does change things. So I can only go so fast in this footing without messing up his gait. So sometimes you just got to stay slower than you did the week before. So every time he pulls, which he just pulled, I'm just going to hold. You might not see me doing it, but I just made a tight fist. And then when he's not pulling, I kind of open my fingers just a little. If you open them too much in the beginning, they get confused and they go, oh, I can put my head up again, and they throw their head way up in the air. So you usually have to keep a lot more contact than you're used to. If you're a Western rider, sometimes this makes you sick in the beginning. You're like, oh, my God, I can't touch their mouth that much. But you'll get used to it. These horses have so many ears that you really got to feel what they're doing and be able to communicate fast to them so they don't keep changing what they're doing. So we're making three circles around the arena. This arena uh, program is on my website. It's under gated articles, and then just look for arena routine. So again, this is his flat walk. We're trying to keep his attention in the arena. You don't want to let them look out. You'll see a tarp and all sorts of stuff blowing. He's not a spooky horse, but we still want to keep his concentration on what we're doing. So this is our last circle. He sped up, so I'm holding. Don't let them change speed unless you ask, okay? You can't get your cons gait consistent and your speed consistent if you're just letting your horse do what it wants. If you do that and they're smooth and you're happy with it, that's fine for you. But just know you're never going to get all the speeds when you want them to do it. And your horse is just relying on himself. He doesn't have any cues to do the gait you want. So now we're going to go into leg yielding. This is a... Uh, a lateral movement, I'm bringing my hands to the right and pushing my horse over with my left leg. As I push him over, you want to make a tight fist on the reins and block the forward motion. Otherwise, when you push and they don't understand, they just go forward away from your leg. So you're trying to help them to know to go sideways. Okay? So I'm going to do it on this other side. You turn what, down what we call the quarter line, so that's in between the fence and the center of the arena. And they call what's next to the fence the rail. In case you hear people say that, it just means next to the fence. So I'm um, kind of holding, but opening my right rein, left rein against his neck. And then my left leg goes on and off. So I push him. When he moves over, I release the leg. And when then I straighten him out for a second. And then I push him over again with the left leg. So the whole point is not to go completely sideways. That is what we call a side pass. This is a movement where you're going sideways and forward at the same time. Very helpful for your horse to know. It uh, helps you on the trail when you have to go around things. He's pulling right now, so I'm holding. And I pushed him with my leg, and he kind of squirted forward. Now I'm releasing once he's not pulling. So never give when they pull. Otherwise, they think pulling is the answer. So another leg yield. So say a bike has to pass you, a rider. It's much nicer for the horse if you just push them over than you're pulling on their mouth. That's why we're always trying to ride off of our seat and our legs and not off of their mouth. Uh, the, we're using the reins for guidance and the bit for guidance and for speed control. But we really try to get out of their mouth if we can and not rely on that. That's why it's very important to have good balance when you're riding. So another leg yield. And this leg yield is very helpful if you have a pacey horse because what it does is separate your horse's legs. It teaches your horse to understand, to move sideways. And when your horse is gating and it's pacing and you move sideways a couple of steps, it separates your horse's legs more. So if you separate your horse's legs a little and it's pacing, you'll get a step pace. So at least that's smoother than the pace. And you'll feel like a soft bounce, but you can still get it smoother. So if you can separate your horse's legs even more by doing more leg yielding or other lateral movements, then you'll get something else like a saddle gait or a running walk or your fox trot. So much better gait. So teaching this leg yield, it is dressage and 
you do have to, you know, coordinate everything to figure out how to do it, but it's an important thing to learn for gated horses. All the basic dressage really helps get them better broke and gets them gating better. Now we're going to practice our stop. So I'm going to take my legs off, sit back, deep breath in. I never pulled on them. It might look like it because I have contact, but I never pulled on them. The next thing I would have said is, whoa, and now I'm going to back up. So I'm going to pull, add a little leg. When he backs up, I'm going to release. I'm going to pull, add a little leg, keep pulling because he's not getting it. Now release. So pull, add a little leg, and then release. The reason I'm pulling and then adding my leg is now he did it pretty well, so I'm stopping. So I pulled to tell him which direction. I want you to go backwards. And then I add the leg to say, now go backwards, okay? So I want him to know the difference when I just put pressure on the bit for him to put his head down and for when he's supposed to back up. Most horses back up when you teach him this movement in the beginning because all they know is pull reins means backwards. He's like, pull reins means fall asleep, gay. So I'm wiggling the bit a little bit so he wakes up. And there he goes. So that's why I like to use my leg. And if you've seen any of our finish horses, you'll see we kind of sit back go like this and touch the rein just a little, and the horse just backs up because they're feeling our movement and they're feeling where our legs are so they understand all of that means backwards. But if you don't practice the same cues over and over again, then you're always going to have to pull really hard on your horse, and it's never going to have a great backup unless somebody else taught it. So practice your back up in the arena, practice stopping and backing up on the trail, practice it everywhere you go a couple of times each ride and you'll be surprised how good of a stop your horse will get and how good of a back up. Okay, so I'm going to stop again. So I'm going to stop riding, so legs off, sit back, deep breath in, whoa, now he stopped, but he stuttered a little bit. Now we're going to back up, so I'm pull. See, you get crooked each time. This will tell you which way your horse is weak, too. Your horse's hindquarter will go the direction he's weaker. So he went to the right, and then I pushed with my right leg, and he went left. But if when you back up, they always go right, they're weak on the right side. If when you back up, good job. Always tell them a good job so they know, good boy. So they know what the right answer is. Otherwise, they, they don't know what's right or wrong. So we're going to go back to our flat walk. As you back up, if they go right, then their right side is weak. If you back up and they go left, their left side is weak. Now, if you're pushing with your legs by accident, you might be turning that horse. So first, you make sure you're using your legs the same. They're in the same place, and you're not doing anything weird before you go, oh, he is weak on that side. So let's try another stop. So, whoa. Good boy. Good job. Now he stopped. He's pulling a little bit on the bit, but he did stop on his own. Now this is our backup. Much better. Nope. He got stuck a little bit here, so I'm just holding I, and I'm adding my leg. Now as soon as he went, I'm releasing. So in time, we want to do it with his head down and make it look all pretty. But right now, we are just trying to get our backup. You know, try to do one thing at a time or you confuse the horse. Now we're going to do a turn on the forehand, so I'm going to look to the right. His front end's going to stay still, and we're going to turn towards the fence, so a little right rein and right leg. I'm looking at the chestnut out in the field. Now I'm looking back at Terry's house, and he did that perfect. So it's a 180 usually when we do it, and it's important to teach your horse to do that so they understand how to move their hindquarters. And uh, people also call it disengaging the hindquarter, and you use that movement because it helps your horse if it's acting up, it can't rear up, it can't run away, so it helps keep you very safe. All right, so now we're going to do the flat walk in this direction. I like to flat walk about five minutes and doing that routine of these circles going around and the leg yield and the stopping backing up usually adds up to about five minutes, okay? So I'm alternating one leg and then the other. His head should move up and down as he does this. I'm going to move back and forth in the saddle. Now he's pulling, so I just held. Now, this is normal, because remember, he hasn't been in training very long, so he just went out of gate. I have to block him from going out of gate, even if it's the footing. I have to help him go, no, no, you can carry yourself. You can do this. You just got to stay this speed and keep that same frame that we want you in, with your head about level with the top of my pommel. But because of the footing, it's not good today, and it's so damp, he's going to have times where he's speeding up like he is right now, 
So I just held, all my leg was off, and now I release, and then I push a little bit to get him restarted, okay? But you don't let them just drag you into another speed, then they're going to start changing gates. You tell them by holding them, no, do not do that. You wouldn't let your car do that, right? Just take off? No, you'd slam on the brakes. So same thing with your horse. So as I go around the arena in time, and when the arena is not gross like this, I do ride off the rail a lot. I don't ride next to the fence. The reason I do that is a lot of gated horses are crooked. Nothing's wrong with them. Some are just more flexible than others, and they kind of wobble around. And some horses have never been ridden off the fence, so they're using that fence for support the whole time. Now, you might say, well, I ride my horse on trail, and he stays very straight. Does he really? He might follow that single track, but can you ride him in the, on a fire trail or on the road and put him in a spot, like in the middle or towards the uh, side, and will he stay in that spot the whole time? That's what you're trying to do is get your horse travel straight, use both sides of his body so he becomes stronger. So like right now, I'm not next to the fence. He's getting crooked, and he's pulling on me. So I held, and then I held him straight with my legs at the same time. That takes a lot of coordination. And remember, I, I took tons of lessons growing up, dressage, hunter jumper, all sorts of stuff. Throw without my stirrups, throw without my reins. So all that helped me get good balance and also understand how to control the horse with my legs and my seat and not just my hands. Okay. So... That's going to be our last circle. Now we're going to go into our leg yield. So I turn kind of in between the center of the arena and the fence line, or what we call the rail. My hands are going to go towards the fence line, right rein against his neck, not over it. Left rein open up, and then right leg, if you see it, on and off. Anytime he ignores my leg, I touch him lightly with my spur, which then makes it more pinpoint pressure and tells him, hey, she said move over. You might want to move over. And then he goes, oh. Yeah, I guess so. I was falling asleep and looking at the chickens. All right, so now we're going to turn. You always want to get your horse straight before you start leg yielding. So I pick things to stare at, like there's a pole down there. That's what I'm staring at now. Hands to the left, left right leg on and off. And the other leg, the leg that you can't see, my left leg, you take that leg off in the beginning because that opens the door. If you keep that leg on and you're not a good rider, or your horse doesn't understand anything yet because he's not trained well, he'll say in his brain, I can't move over because something's blocking me over there. It's your leg. So when you do this movement, you want to take your leg off. He's speeding up, so I'm holding. See his head up? I just hold till it comes down. He doesn't pull, and he slows down. So you're taking your leg on and off, pushing him over. You're holding and bringing your hands over. So the holding prevents the forward motion. Bringing your hands to the side, tell them that's the way you want to go. And then by taking your left leg off, you open up the door. So you block the front. And then he goes, well, the only ways I can go is either sideways or backwards. And she's not pulling on me that hard, so I don't think she wants to go backwards. I think she wants to go sideways. And that's how you teach it. And then in time, they'll get it, and it becomes very easy. He kind of had an idea. So I'll try to show you another horse if the camera doesn't run out. Um, a horse that doesn't know. Okay, so now we finished that part of the routine, so now we're going to the stop and the backup. So legs off, sit back, <gasps> just like magic. I'm not pulling, and he stopped, and it made him poop. <laughs> so this time I'm not going to back up because we don't want to back up in the poop, so let's go forward. So back to our flat walk. So I kind of squeezed with both legs to make him start off, and now I'm alternating my legs, and I kind of their belly goes back and forth as you walk. So I just like my legs go back and forth with their belly. So when his belly goes left, I push with my right leg. When his belly goes right, I push with my left leg. All right. So we're going to try a stop and a backup. So legs off. Breathe. <sighs> Whoa. Good. Now he stopped. Now we're going to back up. So I'm going to pull a little, add my leg, and then release when he does the right thing. Okay. He's not so crooked now, is he? He's doing quite good. Good job. This is a smart horse. Now don't walk off. If he walks off, guess what? He has to back up more. Good boy. Good job. Good job. Yeah. I know. He's like, I told you I was smart and I knew some stuff. And his mommy said he knew some stuff and she, she was damn right. 
I kept going, no, he probably doesn't, because most of the courses I get don't know anything. But he does. He knows stuff. And that makes it so much easier, because then we can move along faster, right? All right. So we're going to try one more stop and back up. I don't want to do it at the gate. There he just sped up and got inverted, and I just held until he dropped his head back down. He's speeding up, so I just braced my back, tightened my thighs, held my seat so he couldn't pull me. All right, here we go for our stop. So legs off, sit back, open your mouth, breathe. Oh, good boy. Now I'm going to back up, so pull, release. Don't worry that his head's up. Pull, release. Remember, I pull, leg, release. Sorry, pull, leg, release. So quite good. All right, so now we're going to do our turn on the forehand. So for, think of forehand, turn towards the fence, two Fs. Look to your left. Little left rein towards your hip, not much. Bring your left leg back two inches. Push with your left leg. Hold him on the other side with your right rein and leg so he can't wander off. And hold him with both reins as you're turning so he can't walk forward. You want to stop as straight as you can because wherever you stop, the horse thinks that's the answer. Now we're just going to stand and we're going to hold on what we call the buckle. So the buckle is the end of these loop reins. I like loop reins because then I can hold sticks and things with them. The long western reins, it's hard to carry a dressage whip, and I'm always dropping them. <laughs> That's just me, so everybody's different. Okay, so I like him to be able to sit on a loose rein and just stand here. If he was walking off, I'd just go back to doing my one rein stops and get him to stand pretty good, and then if he wouldn't stand for long, then I would just go back to work. I don't mind when horses are goy, because I get my work done really fast, and then they figure out in time, she just gives me more work, and then they slow down on their own. So now we're going to go to the running walk. So it's going to be the same frame of his body, and then uh, same uh, neutral head carriage, just a little bit faster speed. How do I know what gates each horse can do? I can tell from looking at them. I don't, I don't stare at their confirmation that much. I just like to watch them move loose, and I can see what they can do. He's got overreach. I saw him move loose. I saw him go over the poles, and I saw him do a flat walk and a running walk himself. He did a foxtrot as well, and he did a saddle gate. So I know he can do all those things. Uh, for the owner, we don't want to give her too many things to do in the beginning, so I usually do the flat walk and the running walk because they're more similar to each other, unless he was a fox trotter, and then that's different. And then the saddle gait, okay? But he does have a, a longer stride. The Rockies and uh, horses that have shorter strides won't have uh, a real running walk uh, because they don't have that overreach, okay? They'll usually have a saddle gait instead. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to push him forward, and I always like to get up to my flat walk. We're going to time it, so we're going to do this for about five minutes. We'll show you some of it, but I'll cut some out so it's not too boring. And what I'm going to do now is go around the arena, practice holding him straight, trying to get him to gate just a little faster, but not go into his other gates. So as I do this, I stare at the poles in between the fences and give yourself something to stare at. And I keep my hands a little wide when I'm doing this and the horses are crooked. So when they get crooked, I don't want to pull back unless they're speeding up. So I just pull out to the side, like to the left or to the right, to keep my horse straight. If you pull back, then you might slow down. And so I don't want to pull back unless he's speeding up. Okay? So right now, this is all we're getting. And hopefully as we go around, we'll get it a little bit better. Now, you can stay in a circle and do this. That's usually better if the horse is really pacey or the footing is really bad. Um, then you can stay in a circle. The bending of the circle helps the horse drive with the inside leg. He's pulling on me, so look at me. I'm leaning back and holding. I'm still not letting go until he does the right thing. So you got to be able to balance yourself when they do those things. If they pull you forward, get the reins out of your hands. You just taught them to do that, and they will do it over and over again. So when they pull, you lean back, brace yourself, don't let go until they stop pulling on you. Okay? That's why you want to get this stuff done in the arena. So there, see, he just changed, and he got a little bit more trotty because of the footing. So if you have a horse that can do a lot of things like him, they trot, they pace, they gate when they're loose, and they have some overstride, this is the gait that you usually can get out of your horse is a flat walk, a running walk, a fox trot, a saddle gait, and if they're a faster horse, then you can get a rack 
Um, you know, the speed rackers are super fast, 30 miles per hour. Do I think this horse can go that fast? No. But most of us don't want to go that fast. Okay, so his head's a little high. He's inverted. Now that's much better when he just dropped his head. So he's got to learn to carry his head and understand what I'm asking him. I, I believe that people who sold it to her mostly just did the saddle gate. Keep going. Now he slowed down. But sneezing is not mean you get to stop. And uh, I, a lot of people do this with horses. They just walk in saddle gait, and that's all they do. We want the horses to do many different speeds and do them all smoothly. So I try to get everything that I see that they can do. So he's pulling. He's inverted. I'm holding. And now I release once his head came down, and he stopped pulling. Timing is everything when you're a beginner rider or new to gated horses, you're not going to have good timing. You're going to do things wrong, and that's just the way it is until you get better and you get the feel of what it's supposed to be. So the flat walk, you should not be bouncing. If you're bouncing, you're doing something else. You should have a back and forth motion in the saddle. If your horse has a huge overstride, you better have a small saddle, <laughs> the seat, because you're going to be sliding around a lot. So you want that seat to hold you in place so you don't rub the skin off your butt cheeks. And you'd want fleece and cushion and all sorts of things, or you can ride in your thigh a little bit. Sorry, he stopped as I got in my thigh because I changed my position. He's like, should I, should I stop? But you can ride in your thigh more like I'm doing right now. I'm leaning a little forward just so it doesn't rub your butt. And then the horse has a big stride. I try to shorten the stride out because I don't want that huge stride when you're going slow because it really does move you around a fair amount. But as you go faster, it makes the horses quite smooth. Okay. So again, this might not look like very much speed. It's not actually, but this is his running walk in this frame and in this footing, in this wet footing at this point in time. So all we're trying to do is just keep a semi good gait keep him in the frame and keep teach him not to pull okay so again I like to do it in the snaffle first unless they really hate the snaffle and then I'll convert them to a uh, shank bit to make it easier for the owners to get their heads down and keep their heads down but I teach him all that first I, I don't just shove them in a different bit and think they're gonna know what to do that's why I teach them to put their head down with this pressure but a lot of people don't ride that well in snaffles. They're not um, coordinated enough. They don't put the right pressure on. And it's much harder to frame them up if you're not a good rider in the snaffle bit. And you might think it's nicer to the horse, but you're going to be pulling on them more versus if you had them in a shank bit that helps you to get it down. Versus if you had them in a shank bit that helped them get their head down by putting a little pressure on their pole and under the chin, you could be much lighter with your hands and not be moving your hands and pulling on their tongue the entire time. Okay, so that's about five minutes, so we're going to stop. Oh, now we're going to do another turn on the forehand because he doesn't do these that great yet. So off the right leg, he goes around pretty well, but he just pulled the entire time. So I'm just holding until I feel him let go of the bit. He backed up, but he's still kind of pulling. There you go. So again, that's, that's feel. How do you know when they let go? It feels a little lighter. And you just got to get the feel. Sometimes, you know, it's good to take your reins home or a dog leash and have someone hold the other end of it so you can feel when that person's pulling and when they're not pulling because that's what you feel with the horse. Okay. So he's getting his head up, so I'm raising my hands up to follow his mouth. And now you see his head's back down. So I don't pull their heads down. If their head goes up, my hand goes up. And I just try to keep a straight line from that bit up to my elbow. If they're being good and relaxed, yeah, sure, my hands might get a little bit lower. Holding your arms up all the time when you're old is hard. <laughs> so this is a very good running walk right there, and then he lost it. He got like two steps. It's hard to talk when there's chickens going on and planes going over and all those things. He's pulling, so I'm holding, bracing my back, and I dug with my leg at the same time. Okay? 
Now my hands are very light. So I push on the horses to keep them going. That way when I take my leg off, they know to stop. If you want your horse to keep going when your leg's not on them completely, well, then they won't feel you take your leg off when you want to stop. So you really got to teach them with your seat, and it can be a little bit more difficult. Okay, so you'll see as I'm going around, watch my head. You'll see me staring at things he's pulling, so I'm holding. And I'm trying to direct him to where we want to go, which is my eyes. Now, he just stumbled a little there, and he's leaning on the bit, so he could stumble again. Now he's better. So I'm trying to teach him self-carriage, but that doesn't happen in a day. That happens when you practice this over and over again. And then he'll have better muscle tone and be able to hold it better himself. But if you just come in here and throw your reins away, is he going to stay in gait? No. Well, sure, you might get a couple steps. Or if you're a really good rider, could you come in and fake it? Sure. But wouldn't it be nicer if you showed him what to do, like I'm showing you what to do, in steps, nice and easy. And then over time, as you get better, we make it harder. Okay? That's what you do with everything, and that's what makes learning much easier. But if you just came in with him and just started going for the faster gates and doing all that, that's not really there to him. He's not warmed up. He hasn't learned his lateral movements. He didn't know how to stop or come off the ring. So then they can't understand what they're really doing. And that's why a lot of people have problems with gated horses because they're not fully trained. They have lots of holes in their train. So you try to make sure they can do the arena routine. You can do it out on the trail. You can do it in a pasture. You can do it in a round pen. But you want to make sure the horses have the basics of training and know how to move off your leg know how to respond to the bit or, you know, bit was bridle, respect it, and you have control. There he got fast and got his head down. And you see what I did? Lean back and hold him. I said, no, I don't want to do that either. Because he's probably like, I'm getting tired of walking in this footing, and you know what? If you just let me trot a little bit, it'll be much easier for me. And I said, yeah, whatever. You don't pay the bills. So, no, you got to keep doing this running walk. It's five minutes. It's not like it's an hour. I gave the clinic yesterday for nine hours standing on my feet and had one break. So if he can walk around for five minutes, don't feel so bad for them. Feel bad for the other people working. All right. Now his head's up. We don't want it there, so I'm just holding pressure. Now I'm releasing. So that's what I've been doing the whole time. Anytime his head went up where I didn't want it, I held and then released, and he knew what to do because that vertical flexion. Now, again, it might take him a while to figure it out. The better you are with your timing and stuff, the quicker they get it and learn. So it's usually always easier for the trainers to do it. Now he's stopping, like, let's just stop here. And I'm like, no. A lot of times they can tell time somehow. And they're like, hey, lady, it's 10 minutes. You said 10 minutes. I want to be done. Yep, he's ready. It's 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to stop. Oh, see, they stop nicely when you work them. Now, this was the turn on the forehand that was not so good to the left. So look to the left, push with my leg. Now he's stuck a little bit. If they really get stuck and they're not moving off my spur, and I use a dressage whip with them just to tap them over. So that was quite good. So what else are we going to do? He knows how to do side pass, so we're going to practice the side pass a little bit because you need that for your gates or if you want to go up to something. But I'm not going to do a saddle gate. I know he knows how to do that. I want to get these gates first really, really well before we start to do a saddle gate or canter. So all we're going to do is side pass, and we'll walk over the camera and do it in front of it. And then I'm going to get off, and then we're going to tie him up for a little bit so we make sure he stands well because he was pawing a little bit when he showed up. So what I'm going to do, he's pulling, so I'm waiting until he stops pulling, is we're going to go that way. So my right rein is going to open up. My left rein is going to go against his neck, not over it. Left leg behind the girth, just a couple of inches, not very far, and right leg off. And I just want to get one step sideways. Better than that. See how crooked he is? Now, you see, I had to open my rein to kind of straighten him. So you got to know... Sometimes you got to pull your rein back, sometimes you got to open it up, sometimes you go this way, and sometimes you got to correct them when they're doing the wrong thing. So let's do it again. Right leg off, reins to the right, push with my left leg, and let's go for another one.
Yeah, see, I'm pretty easy. I like the eight horses move in two parts. They don't move in ones like the stiff quarter horses, okay? So you got to be able to know how to do that turn on the forehand first. And that will help you if your side pass gets crooked because then I can move his hind quarter over. So his side pass, even though he knows how to do it, I would say is very poor because he's not straight, he's crooked, he's pulling on me, and he's doing all sorts of stuff. But it was good enough for today. Now we're going to go the other way. So left leg off, left rein open, right rein against his neck, look straight ahead, hold him so he doesn't go forward, push with my right leg, and now my right leg off. So he did one step, and it was much better. Now let's try for two steps. So we'll go over, holding so he doesn't go forward. And this is easiest done against a fence first because the fence will block you. So this direction, look, he's much straighter. Okay, so that means it's harder for him to move off my left leg. And that happened when we were doing the turn on the forehand too. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do it again off my left leg because that means he needs more work with it this direction because he's got to get his coordination. So I'm not going to do it evenly on both sides unless they do it well on both sides. If one side is bad, that's the side we work on more. So his left side is worse. Okay? But this is better than he did it the first time. Good job. And now he's pretty straight. So I'm going to hold him straight, wait till he drops his head down. So once I teach him vertical flexion, I never stop anymore without their head going down or make sure they're not pulling on the bit, because he's pulling a little bit. Now he gave, but he didn't drop his head. There we go. So that's how he gets the correct answer. But you have to be consistent. Do it every time the same. OK, so you'll get to watch his progress. Nope. Don't let them itch on you, because your stirrup could get caught in the bit, and your horse could flip out and flip over. So be careful with those. <laughs> he's so mad at me. Uh, but they have to have good manners to keep you safe. And rubbing on you with the bridle is not a good thing because they can catch your clothing. They could run off and you'd be dragged. They can, if they're bit, go, especially if they have a shank on, it can go right through your stirrup. They get hooked through it. You're on their back. They freak out, flip over. You're still on their back, so they flip on top of you. So don't let them do those things. Just give them a little bump, and then they won't want to try that anymore. But overall, I think he's a very nice horse. He's beautiful color. He's going to come along nicely. And then we'll see how the owner does with him. All right. Hope that helps.